In this video, we'll identify several standard geometric polygons and some solids. First of all, the polygons in, in orange here, and these are all called regular polygons. And the reason these are called regular polygons is because all of the sides are the same, same length, as well all of the interior angles are the same. So you can conceive of drawing a four-sided figure that had the same uh, length sides, like a diamond, but all of the, the angles might not be the same. And that would be called a diamond, not a square, and it's not a regular polygon, unless the interior angles are the same. Also, you can conceive of drawing many different triangles, but it's only a regular polygon if all of the side lengths are the same and the interior angles are the same. So we have triangle and, and square. What about as we go on further with the polygons? Well, we have a naming convention where we start with the root, the uh, a prefix that means the number of sides. So for something that has five sides, we start with that prefix penta, which means five, and then gon, agon. So all of these are going to end with this, this suffix agon. For a six-sided figure, well, the word, the prefix to mean six is hex. So this is a hexagon. And set for a seven-sided figure, we have hept, like you may have seen in the, uh, in the Olympics, the, the heptathlon. That's, that's the women's event where they have seven events, and the, the men's event has the, the decathlon, where they have ten events. So the heptagon has seven sides. We've all seen stop signs. Hopefully we haven't gone through them. And that is eight sides. Here's a stop sign just rolled on its side slightly. The octagon. You might remember that because an animal in the sea that has eight arms is an octopus. And so that we have that oct, that octa uh, prefix. Now for the last ones, we don't have it memorized in our pocket as well, but I'm going to give them to you anyway. And, and the, for a nine-sided polygon, this is called a nonagon. And I mentioned earlier about the hep heptathlon and the decathlon. Well, for a ten-sided figure, you may have already guessed it, that is a decagon. Because dec means ten. I've skipped 11 here because I want to get to 11, uh, 12, a 12 sided figure. And uh, this shows up in trivia questions. So I, I wanted to give it to you. A 12 sided polygon, regular polygon, is a dodecagon. And there are naming conventions that go on further and further. You can see if we added more and more sides, it gets very close to a circle, but never perfectly a circle if it has, as long as it has some flat sides. Even a million, even a million flat sides would not be called a circle. It would be uh, some version of million a gone. Now, what about the solids here? I have eight solids here. Five of them are what we would call prisms, or what we do call prisms. Prisms, meaning you have two opposing faces that are the same. So here we have the top and the bottom, two opposing faces that are the same. And then you've got these sides that come up that connect these two opposing faces. And for this one, uh, for the naming of the prisms, we call it by what the opposing faces are. And these opposing faces are triangles. So this would be a triangular prism. And the next one... Well, the opposing faces are rectangles, so this is called a rectangular prism. Now, for this one, when we have opposing sides of squares, we don't call it a square prism. We call it a cube. A cube, something a magician would jump into for some kind of magic trick. Next. See if you can guess this one. The opposing sides that are the same are pentagons. So this is a pentagonal prism. And lastly, I, I bet you have already guessed this last one. 
the opposing sides are hexagons, and so therefore, this is called a hexagonal prism. Okay, all of, all of the prisms, notice, have all flat faces. All of the faces are flat. Whereas the cone and the cylinder and the sphere, you've got some curved faces. So they, these cannot be called prisms unless they have all flat faces. So let's name this. The cone, you've seen an ice cream cone and, an, and, a, and a, um, a snow cone. Well, those are all called cones. So it's, it's a nice to be able to memorize when you see it in a, a geometry format that it's just called a cone just like you when you're having a good time in the summer. The next one is called a cylinder and some of you may think about uh, cars. I certainly like to think of how many cylinders a car has. Well this is what they are. They're, they're a circle on one side and a circle on the other side and then connected by this curved wall all the way around. Now, we we call it a cylinder. Uh, you might also see it called a right circular cylinder, but nevertheless, it is called a cylinder. And then the most, our most favorite sphere of all, of course, Earth. This is our sphere. Now, Earth is not a perfect sphere. Some some uh, geologists and, and astronomers would be quick to tell you that the Earth is not a perfect sphere, and it isn't. It's it's a little bit oblong, but but it gives it gives you a very good idea. A round ball that uh, is is perfectly round would be a sphere, and and actually the Earth is very smooth. By the way, its its surface. If you shrunk it down to the size of a pool ball, it would be actually smoother than that pool ball. But more than you needed to know about some standard geometric polygons and solids.